Good afternoon, and welcome back to the workbench. Um, since the previous video uh, was a bit boring, the battery charger with not really anything wrong with it, uh, I decided to try and make something a bit better this time. And I've also upgraded, um, well, not upgraded, but I've, I've added a ring light to my camera. As I did notice in the, in the past couple of videos, uh, I could see a big shadow of the camera down here, and it wasn't that great. So um, You can see that if I turn this off. You can see there's a shadow, like right here, um, where the room light casts a shadow. And if I put this on, it looks a bit better. So yeah, I um, decided to do that anyway. Um, but let's get on to this. Um, this is a device, and these are some attachments. Um, <laughs> most of you can probably tell what this is already, but yeah, uh, I found this uh, in a park a while ago. Um, there was no one around, and it was. I don't know. Can't remember what day it was, but yeah, there, there was no way of knowing whose it was and anything. So I grabbed it. It seemed to work. I didn't actually test it. I don't. I don't use these things myself, but um, yeah, it seems seems functional. And I thought, hey, I, I might keep that. It might be useful for something. And then I saw a video where apparently you can buy uh, soldering iron tips for these and uh, use them for that instead. And I thought, well, that's a good idea. So I uh, bought some off uh, AliExpress, I think. Um, and I'm going to test that out and see how it goes. Um, and this thing is... Uh, um, yeah, quite quite good one, actually. So I've, I've read... I'll just turn the light off because you can't see the screen otherwise. But we've got this, um, this uh, little OLED, I think it is. There we go, and that's the wattage apparently, so you can actually adjust that. It goes all the way up to um, 50 watts. You can also change it to like constant current mode or something as well. It's quite versatile, um, it seems, but I've set it to uh, 15 watts just to see how that goes to start with. Um, yeah, apparently you can have different options for it and different things for, you know, different heating elements and it can go quite high, although these uh, these tips here apparently are only rated for maybe 25, 30 watts at maximum. And even then, I did see some of the sell uh, the buyers saying left feedback saying that um, the heating coils burnt out uh, at that high power. So I'm just going to start with 15 watts and see how that goes. Um, I'm not going to try to do it too high, although it does give you uh, some spare heating elements uh, with it. So that's kind of useful. Um, so yeah, who knows? If I if I break one, then it's it's okay. I've got three spare, so it's all, it's not too bad. Um, you get uh, what do you get actually? Aside from the um, the the heating elements there. Um, hang on, bit of a mess. I'll just put those aside. I don't entirely sure how these work. I uh, haven't taken them apart. I guess the the um, this this brass bit or whatever it is, uns yeah, no, that unscrews. And um, what do you have? You got the heater inside this. Uh, I don't know. You can you can take that apart and replace it. Anyway, um, so you get a uh, standard pointy um, conical tip there. You also get a uh, sort of flat knife tip and um, a sort of flat chisel tip I guess kind of yeah I think that's a chisel tip isn't it um not a horseshoe one because that would have a divot inside for drag soldering um anyway that's a thing so I probably should turn the light back on shouldn't I <laughs> that's the whole point of having it <laughs> anyway <laughs> so um yeah, so these uh, these tips look look all right. They screw just straight into this connector here like that. Although this is actually a little bit dirty, I, I've just realised. Um, you can see there's kind of some dirt in there and some gunk, and it doesn't look that great. So I'm just going to clean that up first, and then I'll uh, screw one of these tips in and we'll test it out. All right. So first, I'm going to try and get this bit of wood or whatever it is out of the bit down here. You can see that on the side there. Yeah, I don't know what that is, but. That's not particularly useful to be in there. Um, and then I think it's just... Uh, a nice little stuff. Yeah, some kind of bits of dirt and debris. 
like I said, I, I found this on the ground and it wasn't uh, in the cleanest uh, thing, but in the dirt. So anyway, um, something here, one of these cotton things there. Let's try to get rid of this stuff that's all in the thread there. I think that might be uh, residue from the um, from the liquid that goes in these things. I don't know. Maybe. Anyway, um, I do need to get a better camera at some point. I'm sure. Um, I love how things focused on the background in the shot and not on the actual thing that I'm doing. That's just how it goes. Alright, I think I've cleaned the thread out pretty well. Um, yeah. That should be good enough to make well enough contact, but I might just put some alcohol on the end of the swab and just try and get the last little bits out. Not sure about that center contact. It's um, I don't know. Well, that's probably all right actually. There's kind of a mark in there, but I think that's just wear of the plating from like having the other stuff attached to it. So it's probably okay. Um, yeah, well, that, that looks alright there. Um, make sure it still goes. Turn this off again. Still working? Yeah, it still seems to work. And if you press the button, it, uh, you know, it says there's an error message that the thing's not connected, which makes sense. Um, but yeah. Anyway, I guess I can screw one of these in there now. And <laughs> I just realized, you know, I don't accidentally hit the button and burn myself with it. So let's just not do that. Um, let's see if that screws in there all right. Looks like it does. That seems fairly okay. Now I'm going to turn this light off here and see if it says anything. So if I just bring this up here, um, now we see it says 1.32 ohms. So it does detect the element now. Um, if I hold this down, uh, comes up with a voltage. Seems to be working. Um, yeah, seems to be doing something. I just got to test it with some actual solder and see if it melts. Um, let's see, I'll turn the, turn the light back on. Let's see. Do anything? Oh yeah, there we go. Does seem to be working, which uh, makes sense. Um, I probably need to charge this thing. Actually, I haven't uh, charged it at all since I had it just lying around. Um, so <laughs> I might have to just stop the video and charge it before I continue with the uh, actual soldering test that I was going to try. But I mean, yeah, it uh, does seem to do something, and that's even on just 15 watts. It seems to be working quite well, actually. Um, so yeah, that, that's quite useful. I think I think uh, hopefully this could be quite useful as a little portable soldering iron that I can take around um, rather than sort of dragging my uh, normal mains powered one around and trying to run an extension cord if I want to do something outside, like in my car or something. Um, but anyway, so that seems good. That seems to work. Um, I'll just get some components ready to solder into a PCB and I'll give it a test to see how it actually performs uh, doing some actual soldering work. 
Alright, so I've got a board here um, with some parts on it. I haven't populated the whole thing because that would take too long. Um, but yeah, just a uh, few resistors and a couple of diodes, um, different sizes, a little bit different thermal mass, I guess. See what happens. And this is a power supply that I want to build, sort of a secondary adjustable and current limited power supply I can use for testing things. Uh, I have noticed that, you know, having one power supply sometimes isn't enough, so I figured I'd make another one. Anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah, so let's uh, give this thing a test and see see how it goes. Um, I did notice something annoying though. <laughs> um, trying to unscrew this, if you grab the bottom and uh, go to unscrew it, it just unscrews this the actual tip thing and gives you access to the heater. So I guess unscrewing this connector from the device would uh, require a pair of pliers or something. So it's just something to watch out for with these particular tips. I don't know if there are other designs you can get that don't do that, but I, I bought these ones because uh, they seem the highest power and hopefully the best quality. <laughs> and seeing as this thing can do 50 watts, I figured it made sense to get the best ones I could. Um, so yeah, um, just a thing to note. To, to look out for um, with this kind of thing, but I'm going to start with the smallest components first, so these little diodes here, and then I'll move on to the bigger parts and the resistor and everything, and uh, see what happens. So, yeah, I mean this thing, this should be very easy for this thing to do, to, to do these joints, I think. It's a single-sided board, small, uh, small things. It does take a little bit to heat up the first time, but once it's kind of hot, you know, it works a bit better. Let's see. Oh yeah, that seems to be all right. Um, as you'd kind of expect. Uh, this tip is a bit sort of narrow, not the easiest one to use for this, um, unfortunately, but. Yeah, I'm kind of getting the... Also, it's hard to work around the camera as well, but... I mean, that does uh, that does seem to work, though. Hmm. I might try the other tip. It's a shame it didn't come with a chisel tip. I don't know why I called the hoof tip a chisel tip before, but... Anyway... I feel like I'm soldering more with the side of the tip, like down here, um, on this edge here, rather than the actual point. So yeah, that 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 shape is not particularly good. I have chisel tips for other irons. I mean, conical tips for other irons that work a lot better. See, notice there I've got, um, you know, I've got solder has gone, you know, on the side there because that tip is so sort of big on the end, but the joints otherwise seem okay. And that one's kind of not perfect on that side, I think, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it works. That was actually one of those resistors, not a diode. Anyway, maybe that's why. Um, hmm. Yeah. I think the temptation to Yeah, to leave this thing going too long, I don't know, you know how again someone said that the, the tips burnt out when they put the power too high, so I don't want to run it like too long um and cause a problem, but uh, yeah, it certainly does seem to work, which is not really surprising. Um, you'd expect it to work, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, everything seems to be pretty good. It seems to be flowing well, and and uh, I'd have to do a, a different test with probably some um, 
thick wire or something. If I wanted to assess its performance really, but it's certainly not struggling with this at all. I'm just struggling with the weird shape of the tip, mostly. Um, aside from that, it's uh, it's not bad. What have we got there? Oh yeah, that's a big 1 watt resistor. This one here, it's kind of got a bit more thermal mass, I guess. Um, and this big track next to it. Yeah, that's, that's a bit harder to do there. That's taken a little bit of extra time, but it's, it's doing it. It's definitely got it done. Um, yeah. I don't, yeah, I can't say I like the shape of this tip that much. Um, <laughs> I might try changing to the other one. The uh, the hoofed style tip I think might be a bit better as a uh, as an as an option. Um, this is the five watt resistor. Let's see. Didn't see any point in cutting that lead off, it was so short, so I decided to just bend it over and solder it in as part of the whole board. But that seemed to work quite well, yeah. Um, I suppose you got to sort of... Anyway. Yeah, it's uh, not too bad. No, that's not properly flush. Oh, it'll probably be alright. Hmm. Maybe I need to push this down or something. Bend it over a bit. Um, a bit annoying. <laughs> this is just floating up in the air. Um, that's not very useful. Let me just grab this resistor and heat it up and pull down so I can get it flat on the board. Yeah, there we go. That's kind of worked. Um, how's that? It's alright. It's kind of on a lean now, but I can fix that later, I guess. Um, yeah, that, that lead's a bit annoying. But yeah, it works fairly well. Fairly well. This tip is kind of weird. I think I'll change to the other one and uh, see how that works. I just have to wait for this to cool down before I can unscrew it without burning myself. But, um, but yeah, it certainly, uh, certainly does function at the very least. Um, Mm. And that's even only on the 15 watt setting, which I had it on. I can always turn that up a bit. I wonder what if I go for 20 or something. Maybe I'll go for 19 watts. See how that goes. I mean, it's not much difference, to be honest. Um, actually. Although I wouldn't expect there to be much of a difference between 15 and 19, but... Yeah, as I suspected, you can get some sort of needle nose pliers with grips on them and just sneak them in there and grab the base um, to unscrew it. Uh, kind of annoying. Um, but that just seems to be how it goes, otherwise the other bit just unscrews itself uh, off that base. So, yeah. Um, not ideal, I guess, uh, in terms of um, in terms of usability. But I mean, it does work, obviously. Um, so yeah, there we go. That's the thing come off there. I'll try the try the hoof tip. I think this 
And this one I found like the. Uh, if I can get this to go and focus, but I found this kind of steep angle and narrowness down here, and I was ending up soldering like with this part of the tip mostly, and then that would kind of make solder bridges. Well, not I didn't make a bridge, but I got solder in places I wasn't meaning to get it. So I don't know. It's not. It's a bit short and thin, and yeah. A little bit more difficult to work with than the conical tips I'm used to, which are longer and thicker. Um, I'll try the other tip and put a couple of capacitors or something on this board, or more resistors, and I'll do a test and see um, see if that's any better. I suspect it should be. Before I dig in my part boxes for different parts and things, um, I just noticed I had this little calibration trim pot for it. So I'll sort of that in uh, using this hoof tip. Um, not a very good thermal test, but you know, I'll just see if it's easier to use this tip. I think it will be. Um, let's just activate it, turn it. Hmm. Takes a while to heat this one up. It's interesting. Um, Hmm. Yeah, I wonder. Let's just see if that works. Oh yeah, that works fairly well. That is easier to handle, I think. Um, I mean, it doesn't help the doing it around the camera and everything, but I'd say yeah, this uh, this this one is probably the best one for at least circuit board work, anyway. Um, Yeah. Yeah, that that seemed to work a bit better. It's easier to sort of deal with. I think that that conical tip is a bit funny. Mm. Would have been nice if they had an actual chisel tip on here. But this is okay. This seems to work fairly well. Yeah. Yeah. Um it does seem to uh, heat up a little slower, I guess, because the tip is is further away from the heater. Um and you know, as I just saw, but um, yeah, that seems to be all right though. I wonder how it does with the big resistor here. I'll try this joint again, just to see how it how it functions. Um, oh yeah, it gets there eventually. Um, yeah, not too bad. Right, so we're going to add some uh, signal diodes in here. Uh, just four of them. I was going to put the power diodes in as well for the rectifier, but um, I didn't drill the holes big enough, and also they're quite close together, and I'm not sure I might end up putting an external bridge rectifier on or something separately. Um, so I'm not going to worry about that right now, but I'll just do these uh, small diodes here. Um, just to see how this thing goes with longer leads. I do realize... Uh, Soldering that trim pot, it had very short leads, so it might have been easier because of that, but we'll just see how this goes. Hmm. Yeah, it is harder with, with the long lead in the way, but it definitely is easier with this tip. Um, easier to sort of Get around in there. Once it's heated up a bit, it, it heats up faster the next time. Obviously, it does have some thermal mass to it and, and all that, so it's not bad. Whoops, that wasn't in shot. Well, my thumb was in the way. Anyway, there you go. Yeah. I don't know. There were other sets, I guess, of different different uh, wattages of these. I don't know um, if uh, there were ones with a chisel tip or other sort of shapes. Um, but this one looks good enough. Yeah, I prefer this to the to the conical one, at least from this set anyway. I like the conical tip for the hecko. 
like the classic uh, 936, I think it is, isn't it? The T500 and T900 tips, I think. The, the the conical tip that comes with that is not bad. It's quite thick and much easier to work with. This this one's all right though. This, this hoof tip thing. Mm. Yeah, it's uh pretty good. Um, I would say if you have one of these devices lying around that you're not using, um, or even one that you do use, or you have a spare one or something, or you've used to use one of these and don't anymore, uh, buying some of these little tips for it is probably a pretty good investment, especially if you don't already have a uh, a portable soldering iron. I'd say that is pretty good. That works quite well. I like it. Um, certainly it's going to have some power limitations, and you know, if you want something really good, I think there's, you know, dedicated portable soldering irons uh, that are probably better. I don't know, what is it, the, the T... Like the TS100 or whatever, that that stuff. I'm not sure the numbers. Dave Jones did some uh, reviews on those a long time ago, and I think those are probably pretty good and probably would be better power than these, than this thing. But this is not bad. Um, certainly for me, you know, I already had this this thing, and I can just get these tips fairly cheap. I think they're about twenty-five dollars for all three, which is yeah, not not terrible. Um, so I quite like that. Uh, yeah, definitely recommend it if you if you want to get something. If you've already got the the, uh, the ability to power them, that sort of thing. Other than that, though, if you were like investing in a good portable iron just from the starting from zero, then there's probably better things than this. Certainly, the the whole issue with having to unscrew the Oops. <laughs> Certainly the whole issue with having to unscrew this first a little bit and then get the pliers to unscrew the rest of it is is a little bit obnoxious, but I would say in, in my case this tip is probably the best one that I would use, so I'd most likely just leave that on there the whole time. Uh, most of the time I'm using it. I probably wouldn't change to the other ones, to be honest, so... I mean, the, the knife tip might be alright. It could be maybe used like a chisel tip, I guess. I didn't, uh, didn't think of trying that. It is a bit wide though. It's a bit wider than I'd like for a chisel kind of tip if I was going to use it that way. Again, you could get solder bridges more easily. This one is probably the better one. Um, yeah, but overall I'd say that's quite good. So uh, I'm pretty pleased with that. This, this will make a nice little portable soldering iron for me, I think. So that's pretty cool, which is certainly useful. Um, I can think of certain scenarios where that will be quite ideal. And yeah, that's, uh, that's that. Um, hopefully, hopefully that was a bit more interesting than the other video about the battery charger that had nothing wrong with it. <laughs> and um, <laughs> maybe uh, if you haven't bought a set of these tips or anything like that already, maybe it will uh, inspire you to give it a try. Hmm. Definitely some compromises with them, but also the uh, convenience factor is uh, kind of outweighs that, I guess. I am um, not sure if I'm going to try blasting this on full 30 watts or whatever it was supposed to be. I don't really want to burn the, the elements out, but you know. Uh, be a bit of waste. I couldn't, and annoyingly, I wasn't sure if you could buy the elements separately. They seem to only come as spares with a with a whole whole tip pack. So I yeah, I don't want to risk like doing that. Um, I'm, I'm not sure though. I'd have to have another look. But yeah, as it is, I think it works okay. If I have a need for it to have a higher power at some point. With something I'm doing, I'll, I'll risk it, I guess, and, and turn it up a bit higher. But um, other than that, though, it, it does seem all right. It does seem all right indeed. Anyway, hopefully that was interesting. Hopefully that was useful. And I'll see you next time.